know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 45, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, say curses, can come upon an individual. It says all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee, say curses pursue. All right, and it says and overtake thee, say curses overtake, say they destroy. All right, so they come upon you, pursue you, overtake and destroy very dangerous so we need to deal with cases if we are not going to deal with cases then we must embrace poverty embrace hardship lack and want so we want to eliminate lack and want we want to eliminate hardship we want to eliminate sickness so to do that we must eliminate cases i want you to go to ecclesiastes chapter number give me from verse number five from verse number five. The Bible says, There's an evil which I've seen under the sun as an error proceeding from the ruler. Somebody say an evil. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in lowly places. Right? Next verse. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. In other words, I've seen unbelievers driving nice cars and believers walking. Give me the next verse. And here's where we are. He that diggeth the pit shall fall into it, and whoever breaks an hedge, a serpent will bite him. So what caused these problems is that there were pits that were dug. And the people who dug the pits fell into them. And whoever breaks the hedge, the serpent bites. So in other words, when you are dealing with curses, the Lord said to me, deal with the causes of the curse. And this is where repentance comes in. This is where mercy comes in. Now, Curses outlive those who cause them. To deal with curses, it means I have to go back into my background. To deal with curses, you have got to go back into the past. For if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? If the foundations are destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So to deal with the past, you've got to deal with the foundation of your life. So until we go into our past and deal with our foundations, we will continue to struggle. No matter how beautiful a building you build, if you didn't get the foundation correct, that building is coming down. So we need to go back into the foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. Say so the foundation must be fixed. So that's Psalm, Psalm 11, is it? If the foundations be destroyed, verse, verse 2, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So even if you are righteous, but you have a negative background, a destroyed foundation, you are not going to succeed. So you need to go into your family and check where the hedges were broken. Where were the laws of God violated? And where were the laws of the ancestors violated? Because they are the laws of God that were violated, that is the scriptures. And then there's the laws of the ancestor. In other words, whatever deals your forefathers made with the ancestors that were not carried through. And people just, they just abandoned rituals. There's still consequences and those are called ancestral curses. The ancestors are cursing or have cursed your generation because they did not continue with this with the deals they started i'm not saying you go back and you start doing those deals no i'm saying now that is one of your foundational problems you start to deal with it aggressively and decisively so how do i deal with ancestral cases i go into the realm of the spirit and i ask god to show me prophetically show me what i need to direct my prayers towards you see that's the purpose of prophecy the purpose of prophecy is to show you what the real problems are in your family spiritually then you begin to deal with those hidden problems so unless you these are called prophetic prayers now unless you tap into the prophetic realm you continue to deal with things that are not important are you getting this you continue to deal with things that are not important and so it's so important that one pursues prophetic vision 
Lord, show me exactly where the problem is. Many people in hospitals, they die because of misdiagnosis. So in your life, you have not dealt with the real issues, the core issues that have caused the problems you are facing today. What we have done, what we have erroneously done, is simply try and deal with the consequences. Do you know when you go for an x-ray in hospital, an x-ray cannot detect a demon. It only detects the effects of demonic activity. The effects. So we've been dealing with the fruit instead of the root. Poverty is a report card reporting to you that there's a case in motion. Your life is a report card telling you that something is not right. Your life. Your life. So you look at your life and check what is wrong. What is going on in my life? So, in other words, you know, I'm surprised because there are people who say, I don't believe in cases. Do you believe in that there's sickness? Yes. Do you believe there's poverty? Yes. Do you believe there's hardship? Yes. Do you believe there's divorce? Yes. Do you believe that people get mad in families? Yes. Now, so you believe in the effects of the cases, but you don't believe the cause. The divorce is a consequence of the case. The poverty is a consequence of the case. The hardship is a consequence of the case. So we are going to take our focus off the consequences onto the root. There's something causing this. Let me give you an example. If you start vomiting, and it, the vomiting is a report card that is saying that there's something in your system that your body is rejecting. But you know what people do in their foolishness? They go and get something to stop the vomiting. You go and get something to suppress the vomiting. Even close your mouth physically, I will not vomit. But that is not solving the problem. This is what we've been doing with our prayer lives. We've been trying to stop the fruit. So because you have not dealt with the root, you keep going back, you keep vomiting. If you are vomiting today, what do I do? I go and check in your fridge. I go and check in your pantry. I go and check what you had the last two, three days. What have you been eating? Am I right, doctor? Now, what you are eating is what caused the vomiting. So, in other words, even if you take something to stop the vomiting and you still go back to your fridge and eat that same rotten cheese, you will still vomit again. So there are things you, have, you personally have done in the past that you have eaten that are causing you to vomit today. So our focus is not on the vomiting. Our focus is on what caused the problem in the first place. So he who breaks a hedge, the serpent shall bite him. Right? So in other words, I go back into my family and say, where did my fathers, the thing, there are things that I just know personally, that I know, that my father and my mother, they did one, two, three, four wrong. Because I now understand the scriptures. So I now begin to ask God and beg God for mercy on behalf of my father and my mother because of the things that they did that provoked Jehovah unto wrath and they've now caused the consequences, which is the case in operation. So in other words, that is what my natural biological parents did. Then I ask God for revelation. Lord, reveal unto me the mistakes that were made spiritually by my forefathers. The mistakes that were done spiritually by my forefathers. That now I need the prophetic eye because my parents don't know everything. Or they might refuse to tell me. Or they might feel embarrassed to tell me. So I need now the Holy Spirit to, 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 to be involved in the deliverance process. Because I was, I was wondering yesterday, why is that the deliverance is not ending? And the Lord opened my eyes and he says, because you have been dealing with the fruit rather than going to the root. So we need to take the axe and lay to the root and cut off the evil tree of curses from the root so that it will not grow again. Instead of saying, why are, they, why are they these fruits? We are saying, we are going to cut down the root. We are going to the root of the problem. This is why the theme of the ministry is permanent solutions to spiritual problems. So if we don't go to the root of the problem, you are still going to have issues. Even in your own life, I want you to say, God, show me the root of my problems. 
So in pursuing solutions now, while I was praying last week, the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to dive into the mercies of God. Because unless God has mercy on you and upon your whole lineage, your whole family, unless you factor in mercy, the deliverance is not in view. So we need to tap into the mercies of God, which are new every single morning. Now, to emphasize what I was talking about, Lamentations chapter 5, verse number 7. It says, Our fathers have sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. That is proof that curses outlive those who cause them. From your Bible, curses outlive those who cause them. The other thing I want us to focus on, are you still here? is I want you to begin to go into your life and the life of your family members and look for patterns, negative patterns. What is a pattern? It's a, a reoccurrence. What keeps re recurring? What is it about your life that you say, this has happened again, or this has started again, or this is happening again? Say patterns of the bloodline. Say negative patterns must be dealt with. Say, Father God, I need your help to deal with negative patterns. Help me, Holy Spirit, to deal with patterns in the name of Jesus. So our fathers have sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. So as a church and as a people, we must now tap into certain key scriptures, Micah 7. Now, when you are operating under a curse, what is proof you're operating under a curse? Your enemies have power over you. What is proof that your enemy is a power over you? You are witchable. We've been dealing with witchcraft, but we've not been dealing with the thing that empowers the witches. If we deal with the cause, which is the empowerment of the witches, if we deal with that aspect, what is giving witches power over us is very simple. The sins we committed and the sins of the forefathers. So the moment you sin, the Bible says that you are handed over to your enemies. Or God is no longer in the picture. So that means automatically your enemies now can, can, can begin to attack you without the defense that you need from God. So it's important that you make sure that God is on your side. Listen to one of your favorite scriptures. If God be for me, who can be against me? But the question is, is God for you? So iniquities sins are a sign or in fact are a reason why god moves away from you i'll prove it to you isaiah 59 i think it is give me verse 1 and 2 behold the hand of the lord is not shortened that it cannot save no his ear heavy that it cannot hear next verse but your iniquities have separated you from your god so the iniquities separate god from us so we need to deal with them so that god can come near us again we are, we are now dealing with solutions, but I need you to understand the solution before we just start praying. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. That's the sins of the forefathers. And your sin, your personal sins, have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So as long as iniquities are not dealt with, as long as personal sin is not dealt with, God is not listening. In other words, that tells me God can watch you being destroyed by a wizard. And his hands are tied because of your activities. So what do I do? Lord, a hedge was broken by my forefathers and we're experiencing the consequences today. So I can't go and get my forefathers from the grave and tell them repent. Since I'm in their bloodline, that's why I'm being affected. It means that I can also reverse the effects since I'm in that same bloodline. I can repent on their behalf since if I can be cursed because I'm in that bloodline, I can reverse the curse because I'm in that bloodline. If I keep quiet and I say, I don't know why things are not moving and I get depressed, I, I can't stand people who get depressed. I can't stand it. I can't. Well, what, what are you saying? You can't afford to be depressed. You've got to pursue solutions. Hallelujah. Because if you're depressed, what, what are your children going to do? Pursue solutions. Don't be a crybaby in the kingdom. This is the army of the living God, not the crash of Jehovah. The army of the living God. There are, people in, there are people in the kingdom who are behaving like people in kindergarten. And yet you are whole grown men. Stop being a baby. Are you understanding me? Everybody's got problems. If I tell you my problems, you cry for me. While you are depressed, the devil is kicking you while you are down there. What do I do? 
Because listen to me, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Anytime you lose your joy, the devil is in operation. Demons are having a party with you. Am I talking to somebody here? No matter how bad your situation is, feeling sorry for yourself is not a solution. Are you catching this somebody? So what do you do? You pursue, you pursue solutions. My forefathers, they messed up, all right? That is the problem. What is the solution? What the man of God is talking about this morning, that is the solution. So I pursue solutions from the word of God. So if I can be cursed through this bloodline, I can also through the same bloodline reverse the curse. I must reverse the case. I must go back into the archives of my family and begin to reverse the cases pronounced by the forefathers, hallelujah, or caused by the forefathers. Micah 7, go back to Micah 7. So remember what I said that when you sin, God give me verse 8, when you sin, God gives you over to your enemies. He says, my enemies do not, do not rejoice over me, my enemies. When I fall, I shall rise again. Right? So, this, by, by this scripture, you are telling your enemies that yes, I had been give, handed over to you. Yes, you had been winning because of my ignorance. But my enemies, I'm telling you, your season of joy must end. Because now I'm arising again out of the information I'm receiving from this platform. And I'm going to deal with the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with the cases in my family. For I understand that there is the power of the blood of Jesus that can wash away every single iniquity in my background I must wash it away hallelujah give me verse 18 to verse 21 give me verse 18 he says who is a God like you pardoning iniquity so God can pardon iniquity is there we don't hear just talk about the problem we hear also talk about the solution so when God pardons the iniquity he starts to hear your prayers Isaiah, Isaiah 59 Verse 1 to 2. He starts to hear your prayers. So can you imagine the reason why your things have not changed to date is because your prayers were not being heard. It's not for lack of prayer. You are a prayer machine. No. It's because you had not dealt with the obstacle to answered prayer, which is iniquity and sin. So what do you do? You now take these golden scriptures like this and begin to say, my father, my God, my forefathers, they sinned. And your word says there's provision in your word to pardon iniquities. So father God, you are so merciful that you pardon iniquity. Or you put it this way, my father, my God, I beg you to pardon the iniquities of my forefathers. Yeah, and admit that they were wrong. Yes, they were wrong in sacrificing to idols. Hallelujah. For Proverbs 21 verse 27, it says that when you sacrifice to idols, it is an abomination unto the Lord. So my, my forefathers, they did abominable things. But according to Micah chapter 3 verse number 18, my father, my God, you can pardon that iniquity. You can pass over the transgressions. So by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Passover, pass over the transgressions, Jehovah God, when the angel of death comes and he has a right to destroy us as a family, let your blood pass over. Let your blood pass over. Otherwise, you'll be repeating the problems your parents have. A curse causeless shall not come. A curse causeless shall not come. So what are we doing? We are dealing with the cause. Why is it that things are not moving well in my family? Because of the iniquities of the forefathers. What do I do about the iniquities? I go to the cross and say, Jesus, you were bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah 53. You were bruised for our iniquities. So I take the bruising of Jesus over 2,000 years ago and I now apply it as a solution in 2020. Are you getting it? The, you see, if you are coughing, for example, if, you, if you've got your flu, hello, you can go into, it, maybe, what is the day today? The 10th, the 10th of March. You can walk into a pharmacy on the 10th of March, right, and say, I want Benilin for flu. This one. All right? Now, when you take that Benilin for flu, that is the solution. Hello? It was not manufactured on the 10th of March. You can read there, this was batch number 4712. Hello? Hello? And they'll tell you it was made on this date, the 27th of January 2020. But you are applying it on the 10th of March. And it also has an expiry date, maybe uh, uh, 27 January 2021. This one. Which means pay sub up. But it's not that it was 
manufactured today. What Jesus did on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago is what you can take as a solution to your current problems. Are you getting it? Watch this. The manufacturing of Benilin for flu does not negate your having flu. This is where people have missed it. They thought because by the stripes of Jesus, by, by the bruising of Jesus on the cross, iniquities were done away with. No, that is a solution that was made available so what do i do i take what was made available before and i apply it to today no one will apply it for you that's why he says work out your own salvation your own salvation your own salvation lord jesus thank you because you made the solution available hallelujah so i take that solution and i apply it to my current situation hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. The stress that people have about the coronavirus is that there's no real solution that is there available at the moment in the physical. Because you don't worry about just a normal flu. You just go and get Benilin for flu. You hit that thing and it's gone. Hallelujah. So you don't say, the flu, the flu. No, I don't think I'm shonga. But I'm shonga, you apply it. Hallelujah. You go and you take what Jesus did on the cross and you apply it. Simple. Say I'll win this time. Psalm 102. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Blind Bartimaeus, his set time to be healed had come. The appointed time. Say appointed time. Do you know if you miss your appointment, you have missed it. You have missed it. You have to wait for another chance. Are you understanding me? Because you, you, you don't just get an appointment just like that. You've been working for it maybe for six months. And you have an appointment. So like some specialists, they can only see you after six months. And so if you miss your appointment, that's it. Maybe you're going to see them after another year. And the Lord is saying to me, breakthroughs are the same. Your breakthrough has an appointed time. An appointed time. He says the sons of Issachar, they knew the times and the seasons. So many times we miss our breakthroughs because we don't know the appointed time. But watch this. At that same appointed time, that's when you need to cry for mercy. Because the moment that you are saying, you know what, there are things that I play. You could even be telling your wife that there are things that I play. That I, if this and this and this happen, ah, you are you understanding me? So those are the things that the devil fights. So the devil fights you at the time, or at the appointed time. His biggest fight against you is at your appointed time. Because there are lifetime breakthroughs. That when you get this breakthrough, listen to me. There are breakthroughs that are worth one year prayer one breakthrough one breakthrough so that's the one that the enemy he, he 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 rages against you and wages a serious war against you because it's going to change your life for the rest of your life hallelujah so at that time of breakthrough the enemy begins to accuse you and say no this one cannot rise because of one two three four and what they are saying about you is correct I know the devil is a liar, but he doesn't lie all the time so you 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 legally you are not permitted to get those things so what do you do? You now beg for mercy because the appointed time is here. So anytime, listen to me, let me teach you a new way. What you've been doing, and this is why you've been failing. What you've been doing is when you're going for a big meeting, you're saying, Father, make the meeting a success in the name of Jesus. Father, cause those people to give me what I want in the name of Jesus. Cause them to have a, a supernatural favor upon my life in the name of Jesus. Right? That's, how many of you praying those prayers before meetings? Okay. How many have had no success? You see, it's the same numbers. Do you know why? Because you're not supposed to be crying out about the meeting. You're supposed to be crying for mercy. So that whatever the devil has been accusing you of, which he is right, is covered by the blood. So when it is now covered by the blood, you enter the meeting as an innocent man oh you don't understand you don't understand mercy is a system in the kingdom listen to this carefully never forget this statement mercy is a system in the kingdom whereby guilty men are set free hey, yeah, 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 yeah. they are set free listen to me you will never prosper based on your righteousness you will never prosper based on your prayer points let me even dare say you will never rise based on your giving alone because even after you give, when it's time for your harvest, the accuser accuses. So what we need to beg for is mercy. 
my father my god there are so many meetings i'm having right now there are so many things that are at play there it, it is my set time to be blessed i don't want another cycle of failure so what do i do i beg god for mercy oh raise your hands and begin to pray with that understanding that what you need at the point of your breakthrough is mercy we fail to get the breakthrough not because it's not ours but we fail based on spiritual legalities and technicalities. There is what is called a spiritual court in the realm of the spirit. Because you can't, be, you can't talk about judge, God, huh? accuser, devil, witness. The, all those, I might have seen scriptures that talk about the judge, that talk about justice. Hello? That talk about the accuser. How many have seen those scriptures? They're in the Bible. So all those scriptures, just a basic revelation tells me that there is a spiritual court in the realm of the spirit. So before anything significant is given to me, that court case is held in the realm of the spirit. So you must appear in the realm of the spirit to defend your case. That's prayer now. Are you listening to me? Because there's that if you don't show up for court, one of the things that guilty, it is assumed that you are guilty, and immediately a warrant of arrest is issued against you. Am I right? Am I right? As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. So there are things that you have lost because you have lost the case. Maybe you didn't appear, or you appeared in ignorance, or you appeared there, and your lawyer, you know, you can have a good case, but a bad lawyer. Your lawyer did not know the, the, the law effectively to get you right. Do you know, guilty men, if they have a good lawyer, are you, am, am I talking to somebody here? Look at this. He says in verse 25, he shall speak pompous words. This is the enemy, right? The Most High shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall in, intend to change times and law. So this is the devil. He wants to change the times. He wants to say, it's not time for him to get blessed. That is the changing of the times. He wants to change the spiritual timetable. Listen to this. And the Bible says, to, to change times and law, then the saints shall be given into, into his hands for a time and a time and a half. In other words, the devil presents a case to God and says, this person is guilty. So hand him over to me. It's in the Bible. You can be handed over to the devil for disciplining so the devil wants you i think listen peter peter the devil wants you to sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you give me the next verse give me the next verse but the court you see the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever so there is a satanic court are you listening to me? There is a satanic court. So in that court, if you have a good lawyer, the lawyer will say, Master, yes, your worship, I know this person has done wrong according to this law, one, two, three. But if we take such and such a case, reference now, where this person, Akata, did the same thing, and they were pardoned because it was a first-time offense, then he says, if it pleases the court, your worship, please, can you pardon this person according to this provision in the Constitution? That means that you can take the scriptures and begin to act like you are in a court of law. Am I talking to somebody here? And the enemy has a real case against you, but you say, oh God, you are rich in mercy. Your mercies, they are new every morning, and you can pardon these iniquities, you can pardon these sins. And as God pardons the sins, the devil now no longer has a case. He has to back off. When he backs off, you get your breakthrough. Uh, I wish somebody would get it. When the devil backs off, based on the same law, listen to me. This is what the Lord is saying. The, the devil accuses you based on the law. So if you don't know the word that can defend you, you will be guilty, you will be imprisoned, you will remain sick, you will remain poor, you continue to struggle. The devil does not fear scripture. Listen to me. The devil fears your understanding of scripture. It's not the scripture he's afraid of. Uh -huh. He met the, the word. He met Jesus, the word in person. He met him. The devil is not afraid of scripture. He calls scripture. 
He's not afraid of scripture. So don't think that if you just quote a scripture, the devil's afraid. No. He is afraid of your understanding. He is afraid of your understanding. What is your understanding? Light. This morning I pray that light has shone upon somebody. That when you look at the word of God now, you are looking for ways of escape. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You are looking for ways of escape. You are now studying the Bible as a legal book that ah. I am guilty by genes, but I can come out with this scripture. I am guilty because of what my forefathers did, but I can come out with this scripture. Mercy is a bailout system in the kingdom where guilty men are set free. Though they are we know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Unlocking your destiny